Hello YouTube. Okay, today we're going to talk about mechanical keyboards and what makes them so different from rubber dome keyboards and why they are desirable. I think the most well-known, well-revered, and workhorse um, mechanical keyboard for most people is the IBM Model M as seen here. It uses a buckling spring type of switch, which essentially is a buckling spring that pushes down a membrane switch. Earlier IBM keyboards, such as the Model F, uh, used capacitive switches rather than membrane switches. However, the buckling spring membrane switch has still been alive and well. This is what an IBM Model M sounds like when you press the keys. It has a definitive click type sound. It is a sound that some people don't like. Some people don't like their keyboards to be clicky. Some people uh, prefer that because it's auditory and tactile feedback. Now that's what these, uh, that's what a buckling spring switch keyboard has. It has tactile and auditory feedback. And some people like. I personally just like the way it feels when you type. Um, but, yeah. The Model M is not the only keyboard out there, and Buckling Spring is not the only type of mechanical switch out there. In this video, we will take a look at the different mechanical switches that can be in a keyboard, and what you have to choose from if you're interested in purchasing a mechanical keyboard, and and really tune and really get a keyboard that's adapted to what your fingers like. Each type of switch feels different. So, I mean, everyone has a different taste. So, obviously, some someone would prefer one switch over another. And we'll take a look at the different possibilities of switches that you can use. At least in a general sense. This is my particular keyboard of choice. This is the Rosewell RK9000, which is based on the same chassis that the uh, the Philco Magis Touch uses. So, essentially, it is a, Phil it is a Philco Magis Touch for $50 cheaper. You may think of Rosewell as a Newegg's in-house brand that sells particularly cheap things, but this this is definitely not a cheap keyboard by any means. I mean, and I mean cheap as in cheap and nasty. By any, this is not a cheaply built keyboard by any means. Steel Series also has a keyboard on the market with this with a with a same with a similar chassis to this one. So it's a it's a pretty uh it's a chassis you see around in a couple different keyboards. Now they sell the RK9000 in different varieties. I happen to get the uh one with black switches. Now cherry black switches are very linear and don't have any tactile feedback. It's just a very when you push a key down, let's use a uh, control for an example here. When you push a key down, it's very linear. The only click you hear is the key bottoming out. It's a very linear type of feel. And I happen to like the linear feel. It feels very good. A lot of the linear switches are uh, yeah, uh, ideal for gaming because you don't have to push the key down as far for it to register. So if you just barely touch a key, it'll still work. And that's my particular uh, taste in keyboards. I like MX Black switches. But there are many other types of switches. We'll go through all the types of switches. There's a website here. There's a thread over on, here on uh, overclock.net called Common Key Switches. A switch is definitely not just a switch. And we'll talk about these. The first type of switch we're going to look at are Cherry MX Black switches. Now as you can see, a Cherry MX Black switch, let me see if I can adjust the exposure here, there we go. A Cherry MX Black switch, this is how it's laid out. Essentially, uh, this is what a Cherry switch looks like on the inside and how it works. 
you can see right here the uh, switch moves the switch actually is this contact here so it, it actually uses a spring when you push it down and the type of switch is a linear switch obviously Oops, that's better I'll read all this to you since it's pretty hard to see. Cherry MX Black switches are linear, non-tactile switches. These are considered one of the best switch types for gaming. When gaming, having a tactile bump does absolutely nothing because you're going to be bottoming out anyway. So these give you a very smooth feel. The actuation and release points are at the exact same position as well, so games that require a lot of double tapping become easier than on any other key switch. However, most people don't enjoy typing on them that much due in part to their linear nature. If you're a person who tends to hit a wrong key ever so often while gaming, these will be beneficial in that the high uh, actuation force will help prevent many of these accidental presses. So, these switches have a real purpose. They're, they're meant for... Um, They really are meant for things like gaming and just a linear feel. I just happen to like the way they feel. I actually do type on these normally because uh, they just have such a smooth feeling. The next, the next switch we will discuss is a Cherry MX Brown switch. And the, this particular switch is a little bit different than the, uh, the Cherry MX Blacks. The Cherry MX Brown switches actually have are actual, is an actual tactile switch, as you can see by the type down there. Um, these switches are for the people, for those who like Model M's um, and like the tactile feedback they give. The, these are a switch to consider for sure. And since the description does, says it better than says this better than I can by any length, so let's read it. Cherry MX Brown switches are considered a middle ground between typing and gaming switches. They have a light tactile feel halfway through the key press that lets you know the switch has activated. This gives you an indication of what you can release the switch. That, that grammar confuses me, but whatever. The switch is considered a middle ground because the reset point and actuation point are close enough together that you can float at that point, enabling you to double tap faster. The switch itself actually has a peak force of 55G. It is 45G at the point of actuation. This is due to the design of the cherry switch itself. So, there you have it. And of course the next switch we will talk about are Cherry Blues. Now this is the Cherry Blue switch. You can see how different it is from the other switches. You can see in the design of the brown switch. You can see in the design of the brown switch why it has that tactile bump, that little tab. Uh, at the end right there. But you go down to the blue switch you can see why right here that little plastic tab is why it has the feel that it does. That's why the click is there because it hits the plastic tab. These switches click a lot more than others do. Other cherry switches that is. So let's take a look at the description of this switch. Cherry MX blue switches are the best cherry switch for typing. The tactile bump can easily be felt, and the resistance is similar to your average keyboard. Although many people find them just fine for gaming, some don't like the fact that the release point is above the actuation point. This can cause some trouble with double tapping. This, usu this is usually the case with someone who has experienced other mechanical switches beforehand. As I know, the switch actually has a peak force of 60G and is 50G at the point of actuation. This is due to the design of the cherry switch itself. So, the blue switch is a very... If you do a lot of typing, that this is definitely the switch for you. If you, if you, if you do a lot of writing, if you, uh, if you don't really do a whole lot of gaming, or if you just don't mind using them for gaming, then this is probably the switch for you. Now this is a switch I'm not as aware of as others. It's the Cherry M MX Clear switches. And uh, it looks very similar. In design it looks very similar to the MX Brown. But let's read about it and see what it's all about. Cherry MX Clear switches have often been called stiffer browns. 
as in stiffer brown switches, though some users know that they have more of a tactile feel than browns do. This can be a subjective topic, though this is another switch that could be considered balanced. The force required is comparable to most rubber dome keyboards, with a nice tactile feedback to tell you the key was actuated. These switches are harder to find on keyboards, so I bet you anything these MX Clear switch keyboards, if you, if you can find one, are going to be quite expensive. So, as far as being economically sound, it might not be your best choice of switch there. These are Cherry MX Red switches, and they look quite similar to the Browns, in my opinion, as far as their design goes. A lot, of, a lot of these seem to be similar to the Browns, as far as design goes. But let's read about this and see what it's all about as well. Now the Cherry MX Red switch is a linear switch rather than a tactile switch, so again, this is, uh, I guess I could say this is probably uh, in the same family as the Cherry MX Blacks, but let's read about this and see. Cherry MX Reds are another switch that can, that can be considered a gaming switch. It's essentially a lighter version of the MX Black, requiring less force to actuate. Some people do not find this switch that good for typing or gaming because it is so light, but others rave for this fact. Light or stiff is always a matter of preference. This switch was hard to find and was reported as EOL, but it is still in limited production with a higher than average MOQ leading to higher cost to board makers. Marketed with high demand, boards with this switch are becoming more common, but are generally more expensive as well. So, the red seems like... So the red, the red switch seems like one that's, um, you know, if you're, if you like a very, very light feel you're typing, the red switch is definitely for you, but it'll cost you a little more. So, there you have it. Now, these are buckling spring key switches. These are, uh... These are what most people know of in mechanical keyboards. This is the first thing I think of when I think of a mechanical keyboard, is a buckling spring key switch in a Model M. Tactile and clicky mechanical switch. <laughs> Let's read about it. Buckling springs are pretty straightforward once you see them in action. After pushing the key down a certain distance, the, buckling, the spring buckles under pressure, causing the hammer at the bottom to hit a membrane sheet and create an electrical contact. The buckling of the spring also provides tactile feedback and a satisfying click as it hits the shaft wall. And you might also notice the force diagrams that this is the only mechanical switch where the tactile and audible feedback correspond to the exact moment the key actuates. That is the main difference between MX Blues and Buckling Springs, is that the time when you hear the click is different. Now, Buckling Springs, I think, are for, for anybody, really. Anybody can use them, and they're not that stiff. They feel great in the hand, and if, if you just generally... But kind of like the MX Blues, they aren't really made for gaming. They're made for typing. So, but you can game with a Model M keyboard. I've seen it done. I've done it myself. It is definitely possible. But the thing about Cherry Switch keyboards is they have uh, a lot of them have N key rollover, which is important, whereas Model M's do not. Here's a whole new family of switch: the Alps switches. We'll start with Black Alps. Um, you can typically find Black Alps in uh, Dell AT101 keyboards, from what I've uh, heard. A friend of mine has one. Let's read about Black Alps switches. Black Alps are one of the two most common Alps switch types. Many people do not like these switches due to the fact that they are stiff, bottom out hard, and tend to develop friction, as, friction in the travel as they wear. Nonetheless, they are an improvement over most rubber dome keyboards. There are two different types of Black Alps switch. An older type known as the complicated, due to the large number of parts in the switch, and a newer type known as the simplified, which was manufactured by Alps and some other companies. Complicated switches are common in many older keyboard, partic keyboards, particularly the Dell AT101W, which is a very common mechanical keyboard from the 1990s. The most well-known simplified black switch is made by a company called Fucka, which was used in the ABS M1. The Fucka switch has less resistance, but may claim that it provides less solid tactility than the complicated switch. So Alps is a whole Alps is kind of on its own out there, I think. 
White Alps. Now, White Alps is also a clicky and tactile switch. Let's read about it. White Alps are one of the most common Alps switch types. These are far more popular than the black switches due to the more pronounced tactility and the lower force requirements of some versions. Like the black Alps, white Alps are much easier to bottom out on compared with other mechanical key switch designs. As with the black switch, there are complicated and simplified white switches. The two most popular simplified white switches are the FUCA and the XM. The XM is almost universally considered to be a terrible switch. It was used on some older Philco Zero models and some vintage keyboards. The FUCA switch is quite popular, and some people prefer them over the complicated switch. It is used on some current production Alps keyboards such as the current production Philco Zeros, Mattias keyboards, and some others. Complicated white switches were used on some well-made keyboards from the 90s, such as the Northgate and Focus keyboards. There are also a variety of white Alps-like switches of varying quality. Some, like the SMK and Monterey, Monter Monterey, are considered very pleasant to type on. And those are Alps. There are only two Alps switches to choose from, so... Last but not least, Topper key switches. Sorry about that. These switches are very different from any of the others we've looked at so far, as you can see. In fact, we should get a lar larger image of this. Here is a much bigger diagram of the switch. It's he this, this picture is a lot better. So basically here you have the key top, the plunger, which pushes down, obviously, and the housing, which is what pushes this plate down here, and of course this, the uh, iconic ring and the PCB. That's a view of the switch. A better view of it anyway. It is a tactile capacitive switch. So these are so this is a capacitive switch, which is one we haven't looked at yet. Toper switches are somewhat of a hybrid switch and are capacitive by nature. The toper mechanism uses a spring underneath a rubber dome, and the depression of the spring causes a change in capacitance between the underlying capacitor pads. With this change in capacitance, the switch activates. Toper switches are considered some of the finest switches available, as they offer a very enjoyable typing experience with a quieter experience compared to a Cherry MX Alps or Buckling Spring switch. The reason is Toper switches have the smoothest force gradient even compared to the linear switches like MX Reds and MX Blacks. So the smoothest switch you can get anywhere is the Toper key switch. And there you have it. And of course the end of this page is just a bunch of this. And that is a small inform and that is an informational video about mechanical key switches in keyboards. Just a brief overview. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao. This has been a brief overview of mechanical key switch types to see what maybe your fingers like if you're in the market for a mechanical keyboard. I hope that aids people. I hope this aids people in making a decision on which switch they want for whatever particular keyboard they would like to buy, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, feel free to leave one or let me know or what have you. <laughs> hope this is helpful and hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good one everybody. Ciao.